We are in 2021, first centenary of the death of Don Paolo Albera, Don Bosco's second successor. We are here with Paolo Vasqueto, a Salesian brother, who will help us to know better his life and work. We know that Don Albera was one of Don Bosco's young stars and a friend of Michael Magoni. What are the important points in his life? When he was only 18, Don Paolo Albera was part of the first group of Salesians who went with Don Rua to Mirabello to found the first Salesian house outside Valdocco. Later, in 1868, as a deacon, he was present at the consecration of the Basilica of Mary Help of Christians in Turin. Few months later, he had the joy of being ordained a priest in Casale, with the encouragement and special wishes of Don Bosco. Don Paolo Albera, now a young priest, was ready to go anywhere in the world in Don Bosco's name. In fact, he was sent for some years as rector to Genoa and then as provincial to France. At that time, France was rather hostile towards religious, but it turned into a sort of promised land when Don Bosco undertook triumphal annual trips there with the aim of collecting funds. Don Albera was always at his side during those visits. When Don Bosco could no longer visit France, Albera himself would go to Valdocco to see him and accompany him during his illness. He would have liked to be at his side during the last moments of his life, but for various reasons, on 31st of January 1888, the news of Don Bosco's death reached him while he was still in France. It was a hard blow for him, but he was not discouraged trying to preserve the memory of Don Bosco by the faithful imitation of his human, moral and religious virtues. In the three years that followed, he was able to incarnate so well the soul of his spiritual father that he became known in France as Le Petit Don Bosco, the Little Don Bosco. It must have been difficult to be without Don Bosco. That is true, but Don Albera, together with Don Rue and the other Salesians, tried to continue Don Bosco's work and to keep his spirit alive. In 1892, after finishing his term as provincial in France, he was called to Valdocco to become the spiritual director of the congregation, what we today call the Council for Formation. Albera made many visits to formation houses around the world, learned new languages, and invited the Salesians to maintain a strong spirituality and a life of intense prayer and sacrifice for the good of the young. One of the most remarkable of these visits was to all the Salesian houses in America. It was a journey that lasted three full years and covered the whole continent, from Tierra del Fuego in Argentina to New York. He saw the great work being done by the Salesians and the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians, and his visit brought encouragement to missionaries working in very difficult conditions. He finally became Recto Major. Can we say he was the most natural successor of Don Rua? He certainly had the personality and the experience. He also enjoyed the esteem of church and civil authorities at a moment when the Salesian work was expanding. Don Bosco had recently been declared venerable and there was a great wave of enthusiasm for him. Many congresses were held to study and celebrate typical Salesian works such as the oratory and catechesis and the associations of the Salesian family, such as the cooperators and the past pupils, had their own congresses that served to strengthen unity and to express the educational success of the Salesian work and method. We are in the years of the First World War. How did it affect the Salesians? 
the young Salesians were constricted into the army with different kinds of tasks, from military chaplain to stretcher bearer. But there were also some who had to take up the gun. They found themselves in very difficult situations, and many wrote letters to Don Albera, seeking consolation and asking for prayers. Albera tried to respond to everyone. On the other side, he also encouraged the confreres who remained at home to cover the gaps and not to close down houses and schools. And why? Because he had the good of the boys at heart and could not abandon them. And so, even in the midst of the war, he opened orphanages and then oratories. Orphanages were a real need for the many victims of the conflict. The Salesians and the daughters of Mary Help of Christians, in fact, opened houses for orphans not only in Italy, but also in many other countries. The oratories, on the other hand, provided educational opportunities for young people who would otherwise have been at risk. Salesian oratories, boarding schools and technical schools became known everywhere, and requests for new houses poured in from all over the world. At the same time, there was an increase in vocations, and so Salesians kept looking for new ways of expanding their work. What were the young people like between the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century? Many people were worried about the situation of young people. The Industrial Revolution had brought some well-being, but also had led to secularization and the alienation of the working classes from the church. Many were migrating to other countries. Unfortunately, the Salesians were there to assist them. In Europe, however, there were anti-clerical groups working against the church and trying to attract young people. In this situation, oratories and technical schools played a fundamental role. Oratories provided free time activities like games, drama, music and cinema that was the oratory in those days, while technical schools prepared young people for work. Thanks to the Salesians, therefore, many young people acquired a solid education for the future. Going back to Don Albera, how modern was he? Was he attentive to the signs of the time? Don Albera seen the world and used all the means of transport available to him ship, train, horses and carriages, and even cars. He prepared himself very well for his visits, reading as much as he could and even learning foreign languages. His French was very good and he continued to write his spiritual diary in French even after coming away from that country. Later he realized the importance of English and began studying that language at the age of 60. His spiritual diaries from 1902 to 1910 are in English. Not perfect, but certainly a commendable effort. As for reading the signs of the time, I think Don Albera tried to give a modern flavor to the oratories. In order to meet the needs of young workers, social education was added to the already existing religious and recreational dimensions, Oratories began functioning also on weekdays. Job placement offices were created. And the youth were sensitized to the need to save. This addition of educational activities to recreative ones transformed the oratory into a place of holistic education. Does Don Albera have a message for us today? Don Albera struggled, like all of us, between the desire to do more and better, the difficulties of communicating with and relating to others, 
You can see indication of these struggles in his spiritual diaries, and even more clearly in the letters he wrote, for example, during his long visit to America. In some countries he had found very difficult situations, but he still appreciated the work of confreres who were perhaps impulsive, but also generous and zealous. Instead of reproaching, he loved to encourage, and more than theory, he gave the example of his life. Thank you, Bra Paolo, for the journey we have done so far with Don Albera. At this point, we would like to invite everyone to Baldoco to visit the exhibition on Don Albera, entitled Don Albera, the world reflected in his eyes. The exhibition will be inaugurated on the 15th of January 2021, but will later be available on the internet. The photos of Don Albera in his travels around the world and some personal documents are a fascinating testimony to this great son of Don Bosco and of the Salation world taking shape around him. Do not miss it.